Welcome and thank you for joining me here at Film Pro Productivity. Each week I'll be introducing concepts that film professionals and other creatives can use to make life easier and avoid creative burnout. I'll discuss time management and lifestyle hacks for a more focused, effective and happy life. My name is Carter Ferguson and this is Episode 7, The Pareto Principle. Before I go on to that though, I just want to say thank you for tuning in once again. I really do appreciate you spending your valuable time here with me. Um, Now, last week I spoke about silencing the inner critic and how to use your positive inner voice to fuel your drive and put you firmly back in the driver's seat. I'd love to hear how you're getting on with that and any of the techniques I raise here on the podcast Also, I'd like to hear about what you are struggling with out there. So if you have a moment to spare, uh, click on the contact page at filmproproductivity.com forward slash contact and leave me a message. Your feedback will be very useful in helping me to plan future episodes. I'm slowly refining the podcast and if I can understand what other pros are struggling with, then I can create new episodes to cover these topics. The speak pipe on the contact page allows you to leave a message and your message could be included in a future show. Now today I'll be looking at one of the productivity world's most effective strategies, often referred to simply as the 80-20 rule. This is the Pareto Principle. In January I started applying the Pareto Principle to all of my fight directing work. I had realised by applying the Pareto Principle that 80% of my income came from 20% of my clients. I had also realised that 80% of my bother, the trouble I had on projects, the poor communications, etc., came from just 20% of my clients, usually smaller one or two day gigs, but I would spend an inordinate amount of time working on them. I was tired of having my time wasted by low paying fight days and even more tired of jobs which were a pain in the ass and messed me about. I therefore started saying no, a premise that I detail in episode two of the podcast, to any work that I didn't want to do. It's that thing, you know, if it's not a hell yeah, then it's a no, remember? I also decided to not hunt down work on which the communication from potential employers was bad. If I was availability checked, for example, and then left hanging, I stopped phoning them and asking for information. The result so far, and as I put this episode together, it's August... Well, the result is that I'm doing less work for fewer companies and I am making more money. I've also got a lot more free time. Strangely, I've had people knocking down my door to ask me to come on board on their projects. It's been an incredibly busy year. And yes, once or twice I've still taken these on and I've still had my time wasted. But overall, I've owned it and I've had my best financial year of employment probably in the last 10 years. To further prove my point, do you think that I would have produced this podcast, for example, if I'd been fanning about with uh, time-wasting, low-paid film jobs that seem to require an infinite amount of preparation, time and communication with me before the day? And don't get me wrong, I still do low-paid jobs. I still do jobs for no money, but um, I might be doing it because I, I want to support the filmmaker or support an actor or a friend that's doing it. But that's my choice. That's not my business. The Pareto Principle is also known as the Pareto Rule or the 80-20 Rule. It was named after economist Wilfredo Pareto, originally referring to the observation that 80% of Italy's wealth belonged to only 20% of the population. He became somewhat obsessed with this ratio, seeing it in everything. For example, he observed that 80% of the peas in his garden came from 20% of his pea plants. It's something referred to as the law of the vital few. The basic principle that 80% of consequences come from 20% of the causes has been drawn into the productivity world and has had a massive impact. So roughly 80% of the efforts come from 20% of the causes. Let's apply that to my anecdote then. I realised that 80% of my income was coming from 20% of my clients. So by effectively ignoring or giving minimal time to those clients, I was able to focus and give better commitment to my remaining well-paying clients. Adversely, I'd say that 80% of my hassle comes from 20% of my clients. So the additional benefit of not chasing them down or deliberately sidelining them was that I no longer had all that hassle. I had hassle with well-paying jobs, 
But then that was well paid and it was worth a bit of hassle. But any poor paying big hassle jobs went in the can. And I, at the other end, got lots more time off to work on what I want to do. So do you get it yet? Do you see why I go on about higher level thinking in episode one? Do you see why the Pareto principle is totally awesome? Let's go on. Let's look at it in more detail. It should be noted that the Pareto principle is the observation, it's not a law, it's the observation that most things in life are not evenly distributed. So it can mean that 20% of the workers produce 80% of the result or 20% of the customers create 80% of the revenue, 20% of the clients cause 80% of the heartache, 20% of criminals commit 80% of crimes or 20% of car drivers cause 80% of the accidents or if you look at it another way, 80% of value is achieved with the first 20% of effort or 80% of the work is completed by 20% of your team. Or we spend 80% of our time with 20% of our friends. From my personal point of view, I can say that 80% of my fight work uses 20% of the techniques and skill set that I have. 80% of the time that I spend on the phone is virtually useless. If I didn't enjoy Twitter and interacting with the community there, I would shut it down. And occasionally when things start to get on top of me, I actually do do that. If you're interested in speed reading, then you might agree that 80% of the value in a book can be gleaned from 20% of its content. I wear 20% of my wardrobe 80% of the time. I've done a bit of a Steve Jobs on this in recent years, and I tend to wear the same style of shirts and jeans and boots every day. I have multiple sets in similar styles, and I just don't have to think about it anymore. That's really a comment about decision fatigue, which I'll get onto in a later episode. As a final example, Woody Allen says 80% of success is just showing up. So let's look into this a little bit further. Richard Koch, who wrote the book The 80-20 Principle, uh, which I'll put a link to in the show notes, explains the common misconception that the numbers 20 and 80 do not need to add up to 100. They are cause and effect, meaning that they're not the same denominator. It just happened to be that Pareto's observation was 80-20. It could easily have been 70-20 or 60-10. Richard Koch's book goes into this in incredible detail and is well worth a read. But for me, the whole 80-20 principle thing is just a way to prioritise. It allows me to focus on the vital, the 20% high-value tasks, rather than spreading myself thinly across everything. It allows me to say, my time is not worth that effort, whatever that may be. And I can delegate the less important work, or automate it, postpone it, or just remove it altogether. Look to episode 3 if you want to know more about prioritising. To sum up, Richard Koch says, Conventional wisdom is not to put all of your eggs in one basket. 80-20 wisdom is to choose a basket carefully, load all your eggs into it, and then watch it like a hawk. I can't believe I've uh, done this many episodes without referencing Tim Ferriss, but here we go at last. Tim says, doing less is not being lazy. Don't give in to a culture that values personal sacrifice over personal productivity. What a great line, eh? Why the personal sacrifice? What is it getting you? Heartache? Stress? Let it go. Value your own time more. Listen to Dale Carnegie who said, do the hard jobs first. The easy jobs will take care of themselves. That's the 80-20 rule in action. If the Pareto principle is a prediction or observation that 80% of effects come from 20% of the causes, can you assess any aspect of your own life or your work where you can apply this? If the answer is yes, then what are you waiting for? That's this week's homework. Assess your own task list and apply it. I'm certain that you'll find something in there to which this applies. Thanks again for listening. Next episode, I'm going to be talking about Mel Robbins' five-second rule and how you can use it to cut through indecision, beat fear and uncertainty, hack procrastination, become confident, share your ideas with courage, stop worrying and feel happier. For now, though, take control of your own destiny, keep on shooting, spread the word, and please do join me next time on Film Pro Productivity. The music that you're listening to right now is Adventures by Ihumitsu. 
You can view the show notes for this episode on the official website at filmproproductivity.com. If you're struggling with something you think I can help with or would like to tell me how you're getting on, then please get in touch via the contact page on the website. Or alternately, you can get me on Twitter at fight underscore director or follow the show at filmproprodpod. Please subscribe on the podcast app of your choice. And if you're in a caring and sharing mood, then I'd really appreciate it if you would leave an awesome review. 